Uh, hi. So, um, so I'm I'm Hugh Perkins, and I want to carry on with the RNN tutorial from just now. Uh, so, uh, what we did just now was to take a random tensor. Uh, this one, right, this input, and we created an RNN functor and we passed this input tensor, also a state tensor, through the RNN and we got an output, output tensor and a state and then we just looked at the size of that. And then the next step would be to try training on maybe some numbers, okay? So let's just create some sequences. So we'll have, uh, let's say examples equal, and we're going to have two examples. Actually, you know what? We can have just one example, right? Because it's an R and N. So we can have example equal, and um, and we'll just make these numbers, right? So let's just have some numbers like three and two and seven and seven and four and five and one and one something like that so we want to predict that so perhaps this is going to be one the sequence length will be it's going to vary because we're going to train it on no it's going to be this right so it's going to be one two three four five six one two three four five seven okay and input size um is going to be um so let's change these a bit so let's make this into so we've got what uh, one two so we're missing a zero, so let's make these zeros. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So input size is like six. And we probably don't need such a big hidden size. I'm not sure how big. Uh, all right, so what we want to do is we want to get the RNN to predict this sequence, which should be well within its capabilities. Okay, so so the thing is, this these are the actual index bit, and we need to convert this into some sort of one hop, um, which we can do using an embedding. Um, is that the best way? I'm not sure, but yeah, embedding is quite standard, right? So let's use an embedding. So uh, here we've got an RNN, and it's expecting this input size to be already one hot kind of um. Yeah, so let's use an embedding. So uh, basically, I'm going to follow the example that I found. So if we go to PyTorch, and uh, there is a tutorial on sector sec, right, which is tutorials. Where are the tutorials? Maybe docs. Can't click on it. Oh, is this docs? Somewhere there's some tutorials notes. Um,
tutorials. All right, and then we've got um, translation. All right, this is the one, right? Sean Robertson, translation, sequence, sequence network, and attention. And um, so we're not going to do any of the sequence, sequence stuff. Um, but he does have a model where he basically uses an embedding followed by, here we are. So basically, he has the embedding, and then follows that by the RNN. He's using a, a GIU. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to do NN dot embedding, and input size, hidden size, and then for the RNN, we're just going to directly have. Uh, wait, where is the RNN here? Right, hidden size to hidden size. Right, so I think there's kind of an implicit embedding inside the RNN2, uh, but um, it expects it would exp it would need some sort of one hot input, uh, whereas our input is like class number like one or two or three, uh, and the embedding handles that for us. So let's just use that. So we can just copy paste from this bit. So if we say uh, embedding, well, I copied and pasted it, right? Embedding equal, and then let's do from torch import autograd and nm. Then we've got embedding equal, uh, uh, input size right, is six, because there's like six possible numbers from zero to five. Uh, hidden size, yeah, four, or maybe we'll try eight or 16. All right, and then the RNN is going to be from hidden, the input size for the RNN is going to be hidden size, in fact. Uh, so we're going to like, I'm not sure how, I guess it has an embedding, but we're not going to use it. I mean, it will be there, but it's not going to change the dimensions. All right, and then this can be the same. Okay. All right. So we've got an embedding and the input is going to be created from this example. And so we've got an embedding, RNN. We can kind of come out a lot of this stuff. And then we're do going to do something like uh, while true, so let's say epoch equals zero, while true, and then we're going to train a bit, and then we're going to do epoch plus equal one. Uh, what else do we want? So we need a criterion. We need a whole bunch of stuff. All right, so criterion, we're going to use something like, uh, so there's something like an NLL loss. So let's use that. We can probably get it from here actually, but not so. Let's go back, docs, PyTorch, uh, docs, and then we're looking for like the criterion loss thing. So that's probably in loss functions and we want this basically. Uh, yeah, but I think there is a functional form. So let's use the functional form. Functional loss loss, and here we've got the NLL loss. So we're going to use this. So it needs input, target, input and target, right? Torch functional, torch NN functional NLL loss. Okay. 
Oh, so we don't need to instantiate that really, we're just going to apply that down here somewhere. Uh, so that's going to be like, probably like output and target. Okay. What's next? All right. So we've only got one example, which is this. And we need to convert this into the input somehow. So I'm going to do input equal, and then it's going to have to be a, a variable. And um, we want a long tensor, uh, which we can create from this example, probably. And since it's just one example, we can probably create it once. and print it out and we probably need to resize it so it's going to have a set len of 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8 set len of 8 Does it have a set clan of eight? I think it's got a set clan of seven. Batch size of one and an input size of input size. Uh, so here we can put batch size. And here we can put set clan. I guess this is the input. <clears throat> and this is the target. So this should probably be like up to minus one. And the target will be similar, <clears throat> but it's going to start from one. So for the target, we missed the first one. And for the input, we missed the last one. And then this is length A. So the set clan is going to be seven. So like this is going to be seven long, and this is going to be seven long. <clears throat> All right, and then each epoch, we're going to initialize the state so to be all zeros, and then we're going to pass in the input, get out the output, and then we're going to compare the output with the target. And that will be a loss. And then we're going to do loss dot backward. And then train on it. So we're going to have optimizer dot step. And our optimizer is going to be something like torch dot nl dot. And how are we going to get the optimizer? So possibly from, oh, from optim, right? If we go to optim. Uh, there should be some optimizers and we can probably just grab like Adam. So Adam, Adam, Adam here, right? Torch, Optim, Adam. And it looks like the learning rate default is 0 0.001, which is okay. So we can just create an Adam. So let's say torch.optim.adam. That's optimizer, optimizer dot step. All right, and we need some um, parameters, right? So we should have something like parameters dot zero grad, and somehow we need to get the parameters. Uh, so the parameters are gonna be, we're gonna get it from the RNN, which is here, and I think we can get it like this, maybe. All right, and then for the optimizer, uh, we have to pass in the parameters of the first argument. Uh, so we should get the parameters first and pass those into Adam. All right, and what else? And then let's print the loss. So print epoch percent s 
loss percent s percent epoch loss and and we can also print the output so we can print target target uh, dot data um, dot view make it one row minus one row and we can do the same for the uh, output so basically we're going to do dot, dot data to get the tensor and then dot view one minus one just puts everything in like one single row so that it's easy to, to look at and then try running it all right so what was it called it was called test rnn dot pi all right so 716 invalid for input with 7 line 26 line 26 so example is a list then we're truncating this list turning it into a long tensor and then we're doing a view and we're saying seven one input size oh so we don't have input size right we just have like these are just the class which is like yeah this is the class and then once it's gone through the embedding the embedding which is here the embedding is going to convert these numbers into uh, 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 hidden size. Yeah, it's going to use these numbers as lookup into the table. Give us the hidden size. Give them a moment. All right, so fix the error. We've got a new error. Input variable containing. All right, so we've got an issue at line 39. So let's look at line 39. Out state input state. All right, so we need to we need to get the embedded input. So we're going to do embedding and input, and then the embedded input is what we're going to pass through the RNN. Okay. But that means the target is not going to work. Right, the target, then then our loss. So we've got the output. The output is a size hidden size, but the target is classes, right? So we need to either embed the target or unembed the output. We should probably unembed the output so to unembed the output uh, we're going to do I don't know unembedded so we can get a weight of the embedding and we can transpose that so the embedding is input size to hidden size we got a hidden size, we want to go to hidden to input size. So we transpose that weight and then so we've got hidden size first, right? And the output is hidden size. So we should probably just be able to do like out matrix multiplication this and then here we're gonna do so this should now be input size rather than hidden size. And then here we can do out unembedded might work. Do we need like Tanha and stuff? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, misspelled transpose. Okay, uh, Matt 
mall line 41 uh, so what's the size of out so basically it's got some sort of dimensional issue so let's print the out size and print the embedding dot oh out yeah they should, should be okay embedding dot let's transpose it and uh, transpose here okay right so the outside is 714 and embedding transpose transpose embedding dot weight right okay all right so the embedding dot weight dot transpose is four six so four six is the hidden size six is the input size uh, and then the output from everything is this is the set clan this is the batch size this is the hidden size so if we want to multiply this together uh, we can view this to change it into a matrix or we can decide not to use matrix multiplication and we can use some sort of dot product -y thing um, I think viewing it sounds easier. So let's do out dot view minus one comma hidden size. Right. And then we have to review it. So here we're squashing up the set clan and the batch size. And then we want to unsquash it, so this is going to become sec len batch size, and uh, the last dimension is going to be the input size. Our object's not callable. Line 44. Um, dot view, right? Um, line 45 we've got expected two or four dimensions got nothing in NLL loss um, we got here we're doing the view uh, here's the NLL loss out unembedded and target target We've set as a variable. It says expected two or four dimensions got something else. Uh, all right, so let's print out the sizes. So if we do print out unembedded dot size and out unembedded dot size and print the target dot size target dot size let's see how that looks all right target size is seven one our embedded size is seven one six so this is the set clan this is the batch size this is the set clan this is the batch size and it says it wants two or four dimensions oh we've got three uh yeah three so let's have a look at NL loss. All right, so if we go to torch.nn.functional loss and, oops, I don't know where I've got to. torch.nn.functional loss
uh, keep clicking in the wrong place. Functional loss, NLL loss. So it says the input should be NC. So N is going to be the batch size and C is the number of classes. And the target is the batch size. So, yeah, I, I don't know why it's clicking all over the place, but here. Right, the input should be the batch size and the number of classes, and the target should be the batch size. It's fair enough. And so, And so we probably don't want to do this view. We can just leave it with this one. If we do that, we've already squashed up the batch size on the set len. And the target might be OK. How does that look? So the outline embedded 7, 6. So this is the set len times the batch size. The six is the input size, and then the target is seven, but we shouldn't have this one. So let's um, give a view on that. So we're just going to do view minus one. That's going to squash everything up into being seven instead of seven by one. Cool. And then, so we've got the target output. I don't think we want that output. It's not really useful. We kind of want, well, I don't think we want any of this stuff. I think we can get rid of that. Um, we might want, we probably want some sort of max of the S. We want pred equal out unembedded dot max mm, one, maybe. So print pred pred dot data dot view one minus one. Uh, we can get rid of this out. Put the pred down underneath the target. So we're going to have the target is numbers. Pred should be numbers. But I'm not sure if this is correct. This is like the axis number. And so this is going to do like the arg max, I think. Oh, wait, this will be the arg max. So this will be the maximum, and this will be the argmax. All right, then we're going to print the argmax. OK, and then parameters, it doesn't like that. I think this should probably be, this should probably be like rnn.0grad. I think that might work. And then lost up backward and optimize the doorstep. OK, so it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And does it do what we want? So the prediction and the target kind of don't really match. And I can't tell if the loss is going down or not. So let's just print the epoch and the loss. Let's see if it's going down. Um, so the loss is probably a variable. So let's do data 0. So the loss is going down. Which is good. And then so maybe we do something like uh, if epoch percent fifty equals zero. So we're just gonna print like every fiftieth epoch, right? Uh so we can't see anything. So target and pred, it's not too bad, right? So what if we um, change the hidden size? Let's make the hidden size like eight. That should be enough, really. So.
yeah, it's not really working. Uh, why isn't it working? So we're zeroing the gradient, sending the loss backwards. Um, Target input. So we've got the output coming from the RNN corresponding to zero state and the embedded input. The embedded input, so it would be nice to print the input actually. So let's print the input. So then the target should be just like offset very slightly, right? So the target is like the input just like transposed very slightly. The prediction is close. Maybe because using RNN, not an LSTM. Or well, if we use a um, LSTM. Oh, I wonder if we need to learn on the embedding. Yeah, we probably need to learn on the embedding, right? So the parameters should probably be the RNN dot parameters plus the embedding dot parameters. All right, and here, we want to also zero the embedding. Uh, let's go back to RNN, because it's pretty simple. So RNN should be enough. I don't think it should need an LSTM. Uh, unsupported types for plus. So maybe like. 4p in plus 4p in because it looks like this parameters thing is like a, an embedding, a not embedding, a generator. Uh, p, so I'm basically just turning that into list. I might be able to do that by just like putting it in a list parenthesis, but let's try that out. Uh, what if we make it print like less often and let's print the epoch okay it's learning can we make it learn with few uh, like Eight is kind of a long hidden size. All right, cool. Hidden size of four. And let's just save that. So git add, and what was it? It is called test rnn.py. And push that up. Okay, well, there we go, simple RNN.